A huge warm welcome to the Art Vlog Art Lovers with me, George Dopamine, here from the beautiful University of City of Oxford, where I'm hot footing it to the Museum of Modern Art to explore a show by Swedish born artist Monica Schur. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I've heard some people in here, here in, in, in Britain, call her Monica Schur. I've heard others call her Schur, so I'm going with that, but I'll call her Monica in this review. Anyway, it's really apt that this exhibition is on now because it chimes very neatly with the Women in Revolt show back in London at Tate Britain that I went to last um, last Sunday and have put up on the vlog so do um, do do check that out and um, this show is called the great cosmic mother it's on until the 25th of February and I'm really interested to explore it I know that that the artist explores themes uh, surrounding feminism especially second wave feminism um, the, and also ecologism as well and she was very much an academic researcher into goddess culture that idea that before um, patriarchal religions took over Europe and the Western world, there was a really rich tradition of worshipping female deities. So it's going to be an interesting one. She's an activist as well. She was an activist as well. Sadly, she died in 2005. She was on the street uh, protesting against wars from Vietnam to Iraq, and also very much an activist in terms of women's rights as well. It's going to be super interesting. So come and join me. This show, as I say, is on until the 25th of February.
The first work I wanted to focus on is God Giving Birth, a seminal work of feminist art. And it's important to say it looms up above you. It's about six feet tall. And it was inspired by Monica's own experience of giving birth because she just couldn't equate the stereotypes of women as weak and passive with this incredibly visceral, powerful experience which required all of her strength. It's worth recalling that the first time this work was displayed in St Ives Guildhall in 1971, it was immediately caused huge controversy. It was attacked as blasphemous by the local mayor and forcibly removed. When it was shown at Swiss Cottage Library in 1973, Scotland Yard investigated and Monica faced a serious threat of prosecution. Crazy to see it hanging undisturbed in the, in the gallery today when you know that history. The second work I've chosen is Backstreet Abortion, Women Seeking Freedom from Oppression, because it encapsulates the directness of Monica's early work. The images are covered with a series of statements, um, medicine controlled by men, or we want contraception free for all women. And it reminds us that for Monica, there's no high or low art. She took paintings on demonstrations, for example, and was intimately involved in activism, as well as being an artist. Um, this work is one of many in the first bit of the exhibition, which is almost like a call to arms, as well as addressing an incredibly serious and important topic. The third painting I've chosen from the exhibition is called Meeting the Ancestors at Avebury, and it encapsulates Monica's interest in goddess culture. Under the influence of magic mushrooms, the exhibition reminds us she had a transformative experience in 1978 at Avebury where she sensed the presence of the Great Mother. Her deep interest in goddess culture, that period before the imposition of patriarchal um, religions, became a lifelong passion and focus of research and expertise, and it inevitably infiltrated her art. She felt a dead direct connection to female ancestors and wrote her magnus opus, The Great Cosmic Mother, which is still in print, to reflect this final work I want to focus on is Mother Earth in, her, in Pain, her trees cut down, her seas polluted. This work, made in 1996 after visiting the seminal protest against the Mew Newbury Bypass, encapsulates Monica's eco-feminism. She saw these two ideas of ecologism and feminism as naturally linked. There was also at the time an awful oil spill off the coast of Motherford Haven, polluting the Pembrokeshire coast she loved. You have to recognise that the grief for the destruction of Mother Earth was matched by a personal grief at the fact she was predeceased tragically by two of her sons. Well, art lovers, I very much hope you enjoyed that exploration of the show, The Great Cosmic Mother here in Oxford. Um, I very much thought it was an absolutely excellent representation of Monica's work. Um, I thought that really across across three rooms it was almost like a greatest hit and for somebody who would not really seen much of her work before this was a chance for me and hopefully you if you come to absolutely embrace her as an artist. Um, you get all the greatest hits here like God Giving Birth for example which is probably her most famous painting. Lots of these paintings have come from Sweden which is a real treat um, to see to see them over here even though Monica spent most of her um, adult life working in Britain in Bristol um, so yeah it was a great representation it was nicely paced Monica was a very prolific artist um, but this picked the choicest works in my opinion I love the power of, of, of the feminism and the eco-feminism and anarchism it's really riled me up as a, as a sort of into my activist uh, self in lots of ways. And I have to say as well, it works perfectly with Women in Revolt. I have no idea. I don't think that these exhibitions were planned in any way um, in, 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 um, in tandem. But what an amazing opportunity. And I would often actually recommend if you're interested in, in feminist art to do them both. Maybe go on one day to Women in Revolt and then come up to Oxford um, on the next day if you can to see, to see this show. Um, there's a brilliant overlap and actually they should make more of, of each other's shows you know advertise in each other's places because I didn't see any advertising of either um, there so 
Anyway, it's a really good show. Another, I, I thought aesthetically as well, the transition between the earlier, um, I would say more primitivist style works and the later more eco-feminist works with different concerns was really clearly shown as well in the two difference between the two big rooms with green and common sort of activist section in the middle. So that worked really well. Um, I, I thought aesthetically, I actually preferred the, the later works, the more colorful works. The, the, the style of the first works didn't, 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 like personally um like attract me in the same way but then that's just me um that's just you know my aesthetic taste but i love the subject matter it's made me want to re rediscover my old activist self in lots of ways as this artist touched on so many themes this is a pay as much as you want for six or twelve pounds and so um that's really great you know props there to to um the oxford modern art oxford because um you know if you if, if, if things are tight you can choose to pay six pounds if you want to support the gallery you can obviously pay a bit more and i wish more galleries would do that in a way um so that's really good to see lovely cafe as well i have to say there the show's on until the 25th of february i do recommend it a lot um if, you, if you're into feminist art and um, radical art, it's a must-see. And just like Women in Revolt, it's a tragedy that in her lifetime, Monica was not really shown in galleries at all. Uh, interest in her work, as well as interest in the second wave of feminism, is growing. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the art vlog, hit that notification bell, um, and most importantly, get out there and explore this incredibly rich UK art scene.